Hi everyone, it's been a while since we've seen each other, so I just wanted to say hello and um, we'll switch to the drawing camera in a minute. But I wanted uh, to tell you what we're talking about and I wanted to talk about uh, the creative process today and, um, you know, how to get it going, how to rekindle your creativity if you've recently maybe felt not so creative and um, I also wanted to introduce the idea of a creative inventory and what it is and why you might need it and um, yeah, so why, why it's important to have a so-called creative inventory and um, how to regularly fill it. So I hope you'll enjoy the video and um, we'll switch cameras now and hope you enjoy. Maybe you know this feeling of being uninspired or tired of the things you do and uh, everything you do is the same old routine and it can feel like you've lost your creative drive or your ideas and making art can feel frustrating and slow and uh, you might not be motivated at all to, to make art. And for professional artists uh, this doesn't mean that you drop the paintbrush and wait for inspiration at this point. Uh, you have to simply rely on your skills to do the work. This is usually what you need to do when you have client work. You, you, if you're in a professional setting you can't simply say well I don't feel inspired today. So you have to learn how to start up the creative process again even if you don't feel like it. So um, simply put you show up and you do the work and this is quite normal, uh, although it can be really, really hard. Unfortunately, there are a few things that can help you overcome this feeling, whether you're a professional artist or if you're just making art for yourself. If you happen to be in such a low motivation state and your creative output is also low, uh, then you probably haven't put anything into your creative inventory lately. So this term creative inventory, uh, it isn't exactly a new concept. Uh, basically, I've heard it described in many different sort of flavors from different artists and most recently probably by the artist Jake Parker who you might know from Inktober. He also has a podcast where he talks with uh, his two other um, with the two other podcast hosts who are also illustrators and he calls this um, concept a creative bank account. Um, there's also artist Mateusz Urbanowicz and he decides to call it a creative refrigerator and I happen to call it a creative inventory. So I like to think of it as a big inventory box. And the point of this is not what the metaphor looks like, what it is, but it's about what it means. So the theory behind this is that in order to make creative work you have to consume some amount of creative work by others and surround yourself with ideas and concepts and start your own thinking process basically. And uh, you need to fill up on ideas because every time you draw something or uh, you paint something <laughs> you use up a bit of your inventory just like you use up physical art supplies. And if you don't know what you want to make art about then it will be really hard after a while. So. Um, it's important to note that the brain doesn't work like this mechanical thing that you fill up and use up again. Uh, it, it rather works in jumps and associations and sudden ideas from uh, which you can go deep into a topic. So it's always best to offer yourself a lot of these ideas and sort of different concepts. And the good thing is that in theory we all know how to get ideas because humans love new ideas. Um, you have to be a bit careful to guide yourself into the right direction. So stocking up your creative inventory doesn't mean browsing the internet all day. I know we are all good at this but it rarely sparks any action or gives you ideas that you will act upon. It could rather mean looking at books by your favorite artists or going to a museum if that's an option for you right now or just being in nature. 
I often prefer sources that don't bombard me with new choices every minute, so monotasking devices, so to speak, or monotasking tasks. <laughs> um, I'd rather look at a real book than at a digital copy, where wandering off to another app is just a tap away. So I hope you, you understand what kind of um, pastime I mean. And your source could be about art or anything non-art related. The importance is getting input for your brain and surrounding yourself with new concepts or revisiting things that you find yourself thinking about. We aren't really closed off systems as humans. We need ideas to strive and to come up with new views or even just with the wish to try out what another person did. And I often encounter this when I look at artwork or watch someone make art, then I really want to try this out myself or have thoughts about it, and this sparks ideas. So the good news here is that you're allowed to browse and to look and to research, so surround yourself with the things that you'd like to try out. You could also take a page of your notebook or sketchbook and uh, write these ideas down or draw them. You could go see a movie or read a book or try a new technique or make a list of things in nature that interest you or that you want to investigate. If it's possible right now for you, then uh, meet people and talk with them. Have a conversation about the things that you love. Uh, go on a walk together if that's possible. Learn something new. Uh, I have written an article about uh, Leonardo da Vinci, about uh, biography about him, and he was the most curious person ever, so um, try to be like Leonardo da Vinci. Ironically, this could also mean to remove yourself from too much input for a while. Uh, I sometimes get my best ideas under the shower or when I'm taking a walk alone without any additional input. And you will notice I haven't used the word inspiration here, so I hope you can see the quotation marks I'm doing with my fingers. I find this word inspiration is used way much too often these days, preferably in combination with browsing Pinterest boards or buying decorative stuff for your home to get inspired or trying out new art supplies. Uh, you don't really need this to activate your curiosity. It's far more interesting to come up with things to draw or to collect outside or decorate yourself. So you should rely on your own good taste. What do you find interesting? So the next important step in starting up your creative process is not to step at this collecting stage. Uh, so collecting all of these impressions and these ideas is good, but it's just the first step. And the real challenge is to start moving and start doing things, no matter how competent you might feel about the topic. You can think of it as an experiment where you're allowed to fail, not as a super important art project that only allows your best work, and because these usually don't exist anyway. So the important part is just to get moving, just to get things out of your head. And I want to give you another um, cautionary word about the internet as a source. So many people connect looking for new ideas and then sharing them with social media or with art challenges. As you know, I'm not a big fan of social media. I've made quite a few videos about this and I've also written about this. I've made the experience that these online challenges that often happen on social media with hashtags and everything, they can produce a lot of pressure. Even just browsing through a lot of other people's work can be really overwhelming because um, you know, it gives the impression that others have great ideas all the time, every day, and if you keep scrolling through these, then you get this impression. And this is usually not motivating, but rather stifling, and it can also be depressing. I think you cannot hear your own voice when you're surrounded by noise. I much prefer books where I can follow a single artist over his lifetime, or at least put it away when I have enough ideas. And um, as you might know, as you might have experienced yourself a lot of times, this usually doesn't work well with online sources or with devices that are always on and that always lead you to the next thing. 
An exception might be sites or videos that go in depth on one topic. So even then you'll have to find the moment to unplug and to get started yourself and um, to get really into the thing that you want to do yourself with that knowledge. I usually feel happier and find better things to try out when I reduce the amount of input to a select few sources and I sort of have this research time where I do all my research and gather all my ideas and then I turn everything off and just work on the thing that I want to work on. So I've had to learn that I need to stop looking at other artwork before I feel bad or incompetent about my own work. And this happens. It's, it's natural. It's the natural process when you compare yourself to others, when you've looked at uh, someone else's work for too long. And I think the point here is trying to stay curious and not intimidated. So all in all, filling up your creative inventory, as I like to call it, um, with new ideas and with themes and techniques is one of the most important things as an artist. You can't create new things if you don't have an idea. And nature or art journaling is usually a great way to keep looking at ordinary things from all kinds of angles. And this is why I love it so much. Uh, you can do it every day. You can pick the most ordinary topic, uh, most ordinary subject, and um, then you can start observing it and looking at it and exploring it. And of course drawing it. Still you have to actively fill up your creative inventory from time to time. And um, yeah, I was reminded of this and have relaxed a bit about the feeling of not feeling creative. Because it's perfectly normal if I don't put in enough into my creative inventory. So I hope this was useful for you. I'd love to hear what is your experience with finding new input and um, how do you fill up your creative inventory? How do you handle all the input that's available online? Uh, what works for you and what doesn't? So I'd love to hear your experiences with this and um, yeah, leave me a comment below what your strategies are for filling up your creative inventory or whatever you'd like to call it. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've gotten something out of it. As always, feel free to like, share and subscribe. And you can also learn more on my blog, on my website that I've linked below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.